numbers. That's why let's convert it to the char. Convert it to the char. Hello. And you will have such like a result. So the two upper and two lower, it doesn't matter. Really, for instance, hello, the all will be the uppercase and H uppercase, and they will be just skip it. And all lowercase only like what will be converted to the uppercase. So the same thing for the lowercase. So these two functions also implemented inside of the C++ and inside of the uh, new versions of the C++, it, might, it can be found using the inside of the IO stream. So if you have the older version of the C++, in that case, you have to include the stream library if your version is a little bit old. Okay, so the next example. Uh, so the next example will cover these four type of functions. Uh, so let's use the um, so let's use the existing uh, so the, let's use the uh, the words which will contain the numbers. So where are the numbers and symbols? So it would be the person sign, dollar sign, and so on. So what we want to do? We want to see the functions. So the is alpha, is digit, is our numeric, and is punctuation. So as we can guess, if the function name starts from the is, uh, which means we are asking to from the from the compiler or something, which means the those type of the functions will return. Uh, basically, the boolean number, so the boolean value is alpha. It's a function for identifying uh, is the given character is letter or not. So the li, I'm passing the li and clt the li. Li, if this if a condition returns true, if this condition returns true, I Sorting the uh, result. So, if you run this code, you will have such like the result. What does it mean? Is alpha will return the true if given characters are letters. It doesn't matter uppercase or lowercase. Uh, it will just return the all the all the letters. As you can see, skip it, the numbers, symbols, and spaces. And this is our first function. Second function is is digit. It can be also clear for uh, by, by the name that it will identify the only numbers. As you can see, the numbers will detect it. Uh, so the next one is is Lnum. It's Lnum. It's a, just a short version of is alpha numeric. This one is just combination of of the first two functions. This one will identify the uppercase, lowercase letters and numbers. As you can see, we have the such like a result. Uh, so if you are putting like your opposite side of this is alpha and numeric. In our case, you will have the just like all other symbols. It's a person sign, dollar sign. Even we have here the space, as you can see. Because we have here the space, space over the symbol, uh, which is not alphanumeric. And last one is is punct. Is punct is a punctuation by it, but its name. It can be also clear that punctuation will be also the symbols, person sign, dollar sign, and this uh, mark. Uh, but uh, the space, as you can see, will be skip it for, for the is punctuation because space is not punctuation. It's just a symbol of the space symbol, and that's it. So, uh, again, if you have questions, please take a note and remember the name, so the number of example. <coughs> Sorry, at, at the end of this lecture, I will give the time for your questions. So, uh, so SQRT, maximum minimum, about it you already know, and I want to skip this section. And we want to start We want to start the talking about the functions. 
So all the examples, first, second, and third example, uh, used existing functions, so we don't implement it. Uh, so we didn't implement these functions by ourselves, we're just using them for solving our problems. So what is a function and what for we have to use it? So function also the uh, list of list of instructions that can be grouped and set at some name. For instance, uh, in the previous example, in the previous lecture examples, for instance, you can write 100 lines of code for solving the one problem. But inside of this 100 lines of code, uh, let it be so 10 lines of the code will identify the sum logic. For instance, <clears throat> so these two lines will take the string and convert it to the uppercase. So this type of the logic, if you have inside of the one problem, if you have in 10 different in different places, if you want to implement the same logic, you have to copy and paste the same code to the uh, to your program. But the copying and pasting the two lines, it's even uh, not recommended way, but if your solution, uh, not two lines, let's imagine that your solution is 10 lines or 20 lines of code. But these 20 lines of code will be used in our program 100 times, which means you have to copy and paste these 20 lines of code 100 times in your program, which is not recommended and not per uh, uh, not correct solution. That's why, for those reasons, you can just take these two 20 lines of code for solving some sub problem and cover it with the function and give the name. And for all other cases, or all other 100 cases, you can just call the give call the uh, created function, and that's it for solving the problem. And for those reasons, you can create the functions uh, to reusable parts of the code. So functions will give you ability to reuse your code. So uh, in C++, functions might be the two types. So the first one is Avoid functions. Second one is data type functions. So, so the first one is functions, those functions which are just implemented some instructions and finish the result, and that's it, without any results. So it will just uh, execute your code and just finish it. For creating such like a functions, you have to use a keyword mode followed by the function name and you have to put here the parentheses and inside of the parentheses there might be arguments. Arguments might be infinitely number of arguments you can pass to the functions or you can create a function without any argument and after that you have to put the curly brackets and open and close which is our body of the function and here will be the other logic of the function. And this is our first type. Second type, by its name, it can be clear that uh, you have to start using the data type, followed by the function name. And again, parentheses, arguments, arguments and our, uh, our body, body of the function, and your logic here. And one key point here inside of the data type, you have to return value. Value depending on the data type that you choose here. And if you see the carefully, our int main, which we started writing starting from the first week, is also the one of these two functions. It goes to the second group. So the data type, it's an integer. Function name, it's in main. And as you can see here, we don't have any arguments. Without any arguments, we have the parentheses. And here we have the curly brackets and closing brackets. And inside it, we have to return zero. Why it's a zero? Because it's an integer number. So you cannot return it like a hello. Because hello, it's a string, and you cannot return it because int main 
int means uh, you have to return the integer number. It might be the 10, it might be the 100, but for our clarification, uh, we are returning the zero, which means the program finished it correctly. So let's see the examples for, for the both of these function types. So as we discussed before, the main itself, it's a, our main function. When you're running like A out and hitting the enter, compiler will look for the main function inside of your program and it, it will be called by the compiler. We don't need to call the function like this. So the main function called compile by compiler automatically. So let's write some C outs here. So the main function function started. And the same thing ended. Um, so if I put it here is some C out. So all of us know that they will be just printed out one by one, one by one. The main, main function started, our high and main function uh, ended. So let's let's start creating the function. So the first rule, what you have to do, you cannot create the function inside of existing function. For instance, you cannot create the function inside of the main. Functions should be created outside of the functions. Let's create the function void function. So void and name of the function, let it be the hello. Parenthesis, let's do it without any arguments for now. And inside it, we want to just print out hi from hello function. So I'm just printing out some message inside of our new, newly created function. Uh, okay, so function created, but we don't use this function in our code. If you compile this code and if you run it, you will not have this message on the terminal because this function declare it so that this part is called the declaration of the function and this function implemented, which means we have body and we have the instruction inside it, but we don't call the function. So this function um, will not be called automatically by the compiler. By the compiler will, will be called to only the main function. That's why inside it we want to call it. For calling the function, you have to write the name of the function and put the parentheses. Depending on the arguments, if you have argument here, the parameters here, you have to pass them. But now we don't have any arguments, that's why we are calling it like this. I have CPP, and if you run it, as you can see, the main, main code, and we have the output of from our uh, from our hello function and end it. For instance, if you want, if you put like your, for instance, for loop and put it like this, so in that case, you will have the such like a result, such like a result. So, so what's going on? Compiler will start our main function. Uh, in 11th line, it will print out something. And in 13th line, compiler sees the hello. And uh, compiler understood that hello is a function because we are calling like this. Without it, we, it cannot be executed. So this means I, I want to function calling. I want to call this function. And after the 13th line, compiler goes to the up lines, all the lines before the 13th, and uh, searches for the hello function. After finding the hello function in this line, it will just, if I'm calling, it will just run the instruction inside it. As you can see, we have the instructions executed. And after finishing the everything, after going to the closing curly brackets, after the eighth line, it will go back to the 13th line and continue working of our main function. And as you can see, we have the main function ended here. 
and this is over the instruction for the for the compiler how it will identify the everything. So let's see the one more example. Uh, instead of the hello, so just skip the hello, and we want to create one more function, a uh, function called greeting, which will take the one argument. So arguments also should be separated by the data types, argument name. And we want to see out, uh, so the high, high name, and put the this mark in your line. So the greeting function created, but we never used it. Uh, so let's um, let's close. Okay, let's run here. See out. Uh, enter. Enter your name. Enter your name. And here we want to create the string, which is a name. And we want to read from the terminal, from the terminal, one line. And after that, we want to call the greeting function. Greeting function, and we want to pass one argument. And argument, pay attention that argument, which we are passing here, name. And this data type also, they should be the same. If you are putting here like an integer, you cannot pass the integer to the greeting function because greeting function expects and waiting the string data type. That's why, so the data type should be the same. So let's try, so it's a sixth example. If you run it, it says main function started. So main function started, hello executed. And after that, it asks from me, enter the name and it wait, uh, waiting for the name. If I am writing the name, the this name variable will be passed to the greeting function and greeting function should print out our result. I give it to you. And after that, after the greeting function, uh, after 12 slides, it will go back and continue implementing the main function. And this is our uh, the example for using that. So that this number of functions in one program might be infinitely. But if you are not calling them inside of the main function, they will be just created and that's it. Uh, so, move on. So, let's close everything here. And we want to return. So, the question is, uh, so we know that the functions should be created out of the main. So, it should be, so the functions cannot be created inside of the one function. That's why we are created here. What would be if I am creating it after the main function? So the rule is correct because I'm creating uh, from the out of the function. But, but the key point here is our compiler starts searching and compiling it from the first line and goes to bottom. So it goes to the bottom and in 10th line it says greeting. It's a function. But until the 10th line, compiler doesn't know about the greeting function, that we have such like a function. That's why uh this syntax is so that this program will not work for working and for them correctly running this program you have to declare it so even you are implementing it after the main function after the main function you have to declare it somewhere here not implementing but declaring after the these parentheses you have you can put the semicolon this uh, technically called function declaration. Declaration. Function declaration, which is just, uh, we are saying to the compiler that we have such like a function, but it should be founded after the main. So in that case, in 12 slide, compiler, when compiler looks for the greeting function, it founds function. But it says we don't have any implementation here, which means it's just a declaration. And it will go to the uh, 16th line and start switching there. And that's it. And after that, it forms and it will implement it. So the 7th CPP and 
I will give it to you and you will have the specific result. Okay, one more thing here. Um, Okay, uh, so let's create here inside of the greeting. Let's create here the result string. And inside of the result string, we want to create the, our string hi and plus name plus uh, so the this mark and n. And at the end, we want to return the result. So the printing of the result. So if you are creating this variables out of the functions so if you are creating the variable in our case word is created in the root scope which means root, uh, word string is not located inside of some function uh, so such like a variables called global variables so the global variables can be used inside of any function which located in one program, which means you can just see out the word over here. Even, even you don't create the word string inside of the main function. So let's try it. So this example. Uh, so ASD, as you can see, PBT is available and it will just print out, print it out. So even you can create it, you can use it inside of the greeting function. So let's try it again. ASD, as you can see, ASD is printed out and keep it to you again inside of the waiting function because word is global variable. But you cannot, for instance, um, uh, you cannot, for instance, see out the res here. So the, this res value inside of this uh, main function. Why? Because res is created inside of the greeting and this is a local variable. This is a local variable which will be which is created inside of the greeting function and it cannot be accessible out of this greeting, greeting function. And this is our local variables. That's why pay attention when you are creating the global variables and we are creating the local variables. But you have to understand that this name and this name they are the different. For instance, here it might be the n and n. It's just the name of the variable. And this name and what you are passing here, they are the, the different variables. So here might be anything else. Sorry, anything else. But here might be the name. So it doesn't matter. So like a greeting, it's a isolated function. Everything doesn't know about the ASD, doesn't know about the everything else. It will just expect the string value. It doesn't matter which data, uh, so the which uh, variable name they pass, they are passing that the, the will be passed the value of the value of this variable. If it's even if it's a name, if it's a name, the function will take the value of this variable, not value variable itself. That's why. Uh, so the this name and this name, they are the different. So you have to pay attention that you can say about it like a, the name is also the local variable. But how can I access it here? Because you are creating it like this. That's why let's, let's create a variable like this. So this name is the first from this one. Okay. Uh, so what else? Function, function types, parameters, the before and after. Um, let's see the examples. So, so let's remove the everything here. Uh, so the all previous examples, they are, um, uh, in these examples, we created the void functions. Void functions means you can call the function and it will just implement and execute the instruction inside it. Uh, so let's try to create a second type. So this all the examples uh, goes to the void function. 
So we want to create a second type of the functions. Uh, for instance, so for the second type of the, for creating the second type, you have to set a data type of the function, name of the function, arguments, and you have to return some value. Example, integer sum, integer n and integer b, and returning the a plus b. What we are running? So we created a function sum, which will take the two arguments, integer argument, first one, second one, also integer argument, and returns some of these two numbers. Syntaxes. First one, it's a data type, which indicates that we want to return integer value inside of this function. Second, it's a name. Third, it's a argument if we have. In previous examples, we have argument like a string, for instance, for greeting function. For some function, we have two arguments, a and b. And inside it, we have uh, the returning a and b, so that finding the sum and returning it. So let's create an n and n inside of the main function. Let's read them. And we want to call the function n and n. So comparing with the void function, so void functions can be called like this, and that's it. But data type functions, as we are returning some value, they have to be called, but the, this function will return some value, which means you have to store this value to somewhere. That's why we are writing like integer result will be equal what returns our value, our function. And after that, let's print out the result. A to the B, if you have to, if you are pressing the two numbers, it will just find the sum of these two numbers and the result will be updated because this example will be changed what we are returning inside it. So you can also create here, for instance, result function, result variable, which will be the A plus B, and return the result. Why it's integer? Because we are putting here integer. And this result is local variable. This result is local variable. This one is local variables, and here we have also local variables. This result and this result, they are the different. So that's why they, let's do it like a result. And this is our example for data type functions. Uh, so if you are putting here like a boolean, so if you are putting here there's some string, in that case you can also, you have to also return the string. That's why you have to pay attention. Uh, so let's see the one more example. Uh, so for finding the sum, or sort of maximum. So we know about the maximum function from the CMS library, but now we want to implement it by ourselves. Uh, integer numbers, we are passing the two integer numbers and we want to get the maximum of these two numbers. If A is greater than B, in that case we want to return A. Otherwise, else we want to return B. But else part we can skip and return it. Why? Because in the seventh line, if a is greater than b, it will just finish our function. Return the a and it will finish our function and it will never go to the eighth line. If this expression returns false, which means b is greater, in that case it goes to the eighth line and turns to b. Uh, so in that case, you can use the max so the 9 CVP, 10 and 3, minus 1 and 29, and there is a result. Okay. Uh, so what else? The power. Uh, so the time is... So the time is... Okay. Uh, Time is up for the first hour lecture, that's why. Uh, now you have time to your questions. Raise your hand and ask questions until the 10th example. 
If you have any questions, please raise your hand and ask them about the starting from the one until the ninth example. Yes, Asfar. So, why you write a uh, function outside the int main? Uh, so, because as I said before, in C++ we cannot create the functions inside of other function. Because int main, int main, which is the main function itself, is the main function as we said before. And we cannot create the other functions inside it. Syntax is lit. This is incorrect for the C++. Other functions, so the nested functions cannot be executed in C++. That's why you have to, and you must create the functions out of the main. Any other questions? Yes, Asghar. Uh, how works this uh, different functions? Uh, they work in line, or uh, someone some function is keeping. Uh, so, if you are calling, for instance, as we are discussing over here, so here we have the two functions: hello and greeting, isn't it? So, if you are just removing this line which means hello function we created, so we implemented the hello function, but we never use it. But we never use it. We are calling only greeting function, which means hello function exists in our program, but this function is never called. Because inside of the main, as you can see, we don't have any calling of the hello function, which means you might have, in one program, you might have hundreds of functions, but those functions, if you are not calling inside of the main, which means they are just uh, located in your program and that's it, without any execution. Okay? Oscar, is it clear? Uh, yes, so you mean that um, uh, the in but not, uh, but we can see out it if it's not in int main. Is yes, int, ma int main, it's our main function, as we are saying. So as you can see, we don't have anywhere like you're calling the main, in main function like manually. We are not calling it. And the calling of the int main will do for us compiler. When, we're, when I'm writing like this and hitting the enter, in this case, the compiler will look for the main function in your code and it will, it will be called by the compiler. And all other functions will be just skipped by the compiler. And if you are manually calling it inside of the main, in that case, they will be executed and that's it. Okay. Okay, Ramses. Uh, I see some people using void main. Why difference in this? No, короче, какие отличия между int main и void main? So, if you are using the void main here, which means you cannot return anything. So the void main means you can create the function and implement as we did in the hello, as we did in hello, you can create the fun function and implement something, but you can use inside it to return keyword, return keyword, but without any values. So you cannot return, sorry, for instance, for, you cannot return some other data you can just finish, return means just finishing the program. But this one is uh, not recommended because inside of the main, you might have some other uh, errors, syntactic errors. In that case, the main function will return not zero, but other number. That's why we are doing like an integer. And if everything is okay in the whole lines over here, at the end, we are returning a zero. For instance, here, hello function. We have the word hello. And inside the word hello, 
you cannot return, for instance, one. Right? And as you can see, it says void function hello shouldn't return the value because void means we we don't want to return anything. And this is the difference between these two the, these two functions. And this, any other questions? Okay, if you don't have any questions, in that case, you... So let's take a break for five minutes, and after that, we'll continue with the second part of our today's lecture. Oh, Askar, okay. Askar, your question? I'm sorry, I have a last question. Uh, yes. So, uh, why we use return? So, return uh, can use like a, um, like a shout? Not, um, not a shield. So, for instance, so let's see this example. Um, so, hello. It's my fifth example. So, let's see the fifth example. I'm running the fifth example. So, it says the main function started. I'm calling the hello and finishing the main function. So, let's add here some condition. Uh, I'm adding here the some condition if I equals to the free, let it be the free. In that case, I'm use I want I I want to just finish return, not return some number or some value. I'm just returning it, which means I'm just finishing our program. So what will be in that case? If you are running the program, as you can see, after the number free, after number free, it will be just finish the execution of the hello function. So I'm calling the hello function inside of the main in the 16th line and compiler goes there and start executing the instructions inside it. But inside it, in some cases, I'm writing that i equals to the two if i equals to the three. In that case, I want to return. Not returning some value, pay attention. If you're writing like this, this is incorrect because void function cannot return any value, but it can be returned like this, which means it can be finished. In other words, you can like, in other words, you can write like a break if you are inside of the for. But if you have the nested forest and many nested forests or many other instructions, in that case, break finishes our current for, for loop. But return, return finishes whole function, which means after the ninth line, even we have the 100, 100 instructions, 100, uh, uh, 100 iterations. If compiler sees, uh, okay, uh, if compiler will be inside of the ninth line, it will just finish the our program, not program our function, in our case, it's a hello function. And it will stop it and it will continue starting from the 17th line because hello was manually stopped using the return. And return and returning some value. The, the, these are the two different cases. So the void functions cannot return some values like this. But the data type functions like this maximum they can return something and what should they are what should they return we are passing here we're saying we want to return integer we want to return the other data type for instance here we also we are we want to return the integer that's why we're creating the result as an integer and returning it from this is it is it clear okay uh, so the question was from Oscar, I think. Oscar, isn't clear? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yes. you in, uh, in example uh, seven, I think you're returning A and B. So I'm uh, I'm returning not A and B. I'm returning the one number. So I'm returning the result. And I'm returning here A plus B. A plus B. It's a one number, isn't it? It's yes. a one, one integer number. It's the same thing like this. Do you agree? 
Yes, I so agree. The, this one and this one, they are the same. It will always return the only one number. You cannot return multiple values inside of the functions. Especially in C++, you cannot return the multiple values. Function can return only one value. OK? OK. Uh, OK, let's take a five, ten minutes break and then we'll continue. Thank you, Professor Bubber. Mm -hmm.
So guys, let's see the other examples uh, from our plan. So the next example is, um, uh, so we know about the, uh, we know about the function called power integer a and b, let it be the a and b. If you are entering it like a and b, see how it power like this. So if I'm entering the two and three, I will get the eight, which means two to the power of three. Uh, so, uh, so the two to the power of three means two. So the two to the power of three means two multiplied by two multiplied by two, which is eight. So I have to given two multiply by itself exponential times. So the three times. So this is our existing exam existing function inside of the Siemens library, but. Now the task is you have to implement it by yourself. Uh, so first of all, when you, you when you want to write some function, you have to identify which type it should be, void function or data type function. So in our case, it should be the data type function because uh, we are returning some value. So next question is which data type it should be. So any ideas? Which data type it should be? Int. Integer. So let's start from the integer. So the name of the function will be the my power. And uh, do I have any arguments? A and B. So A and B. So it's A inside of the um, main function. So here let's rename them like base and exponential like this. So we have the two arguments inside of our uh, function. So now question is how can we uh, calculate the power using these two numbers? So any ideas? So we'll have to implement this expression. So that we have to base multiply by itself exponential times. So, any ideas? So, guys, any ideas? How can we calculate? So, the base equals to the two exponential equals to the three currently. If uh, uh, exponent uh, don't equals to zero. Uh, mm -hmm. Function no return function my power. Uh, so my power. What is the implementation? Oh, so implementation of the uh, so the calculation of the power. So it should be somehow calculated, isn't it? So we don't use. So we want to use my power. So by the problem statement. Statement says you cannot use the function inside of the CMOS. You have to implement it by yourself. So we want to implement it by your, ourselves. So we are passing the A and B here and we're calling them my power. And inside it, we have to implement this expression. Let's imagine that we have these two numbers. So forget about the zero. We want to uh, get the solution. When we have the base equals to the two and experiment equals to the three. So how can I use the loop? So we want where int i is um, less than uh, three, it's x the power that yes and uh, i plus plus. Uh, so uh, we are running the for loop exponent at times, isn't it? So why? Because we have to hear exponential times multiply the base so this is our base exponential times by itself so that's why i'm running the for loop 
uh, exponent at times. Inside it, I have one. to Let's do see. some code with from one. Uh, okay. And uh, um, uh, we can create some integer uh, out of a loop, some integer, and uh, it's sorry. And uh, so all the all the greater integer. Where? Okay. So and where this integer will um so what's, be what's say, multiplied. Say, 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 where where is where is I have to so where I have to create an integer inside the for loop outside uh, we can uh, we cannot create integer just use base int base which we have and uh, in in the loop uh, base uh, multiplied by base. So uh, base multiplied by base. So in that yeah. case, let's see. Uh, so the first um, and return base expression. So the base equals to base multiplied by base, which means two multiplied by two, which is equals to the four. Isn't it for the first iteration? Yeah. For the second iteration, uh, base is four, which means four multiplied by four, which is sixteen. Isn't it? So we must create integer out of four. Yes, that's why this expression is incorrect. As you can see, sixteen is not correct. It should be the eight. So that's why. So we're creating here the number k, which is equals to the one. The initially. Uh, so k equals so to the y one. Should be zero. And here will be. Case. Yes. Uh, k multiplied by base. And we, here we have to start from zero. Why we have to start from zero? Because zero, one, two. So exponent is free. That's why we have to work three times. First one k equals to k. So I'm writing this expression. So k equals to k multiplied by base. So k starts from the one, which means one multiplied by two equals to the two. K becomes as a two. And in this next iteration, in the next iteration, again, k, which is equals to the two, now we're multiplying with the base, which is again two. The result is four. And this expression, for the third iteration, which is the last iteration, k becomes as a 4, which is a 4 here, and multiplied again for, by the 2, because base is 2, and the result is 8. And this one is, uh, this one can be rewritten like this. And after the for loop, we want to return the k. So let's try it. 10 CPP, 2 and 3. Okay, the result is correct, and I think the solution is clear to everyone. If you have questions, please take a note. So, okay, this is the solution. Uh, so, let's take an 11th example, and we'll continue, continue the current solution. So, what will be if we have the negative number? Negative exponent. In that case, the result should be there somehow like this. Isn't it? Yeah. So it should be the something like this. So which means. So uh, and if you are running the current our code and pass there the minus value, you will have the uh, return one. Why? Because uh, so the minus three, it's our exponent, this this variable. So we are starting i from the zero and i less than exponent, but exponent is negative number, which means this for will not be called, will not be run at never, and which means k equals to the one, and k will be returned without any changes. That's why it, will, it returns zero, one, which is incorrect. So any ideas how can we solve this problem? In uh, loops condition, we can create second loop, 
and uh, uh, for yes, uh, uh, persecution if it's more than okay. zero. And yes, okay, correct. So the first condition, first condition mm -hmm. says uh, if our exponent is more than zero, which is a positive number, our solution is correct. Else, which is a negative number, in that case, maybe we have, if so we want to do the same action, but exponential is negative number. But as you can okay. see, the base number, so this number is the same as we are doing in the positive numbers execution. So what can we do? We can you just take the absolute value of the expression, so the, uh, sorry, the exponent, which means uh, we are doing the same action as we did in the positive number, but at the end, we will change the result. How can we change the result like this? K equal to 1 uh, divided by K. Yes, perfect. K equal to 1 divided by K. So the base part will be the same as we did before, but here we are putting the absolute value because in the else part, exponent is negative number. And as a result, we are just getting the K equals to the 1 divided by K, which is this number. and this one is 0 0.125. And if you try to run it, uh, so minus 3, you will have the 0. Why? Because exponential is negative, negative number, and k, in our case, integer, which is an incorrect integer, cannot hold such like a results. That's why. Let's say change this number to the float. And if I'm changing the float, k to the float, and if you are trying to run it, again, you will have the incorrect solution. Why? <clears throat> because k is float, but we are returning integer. So this time, this uh, function declaration says, we are always returning the zero. Why? Because from this number, if you are converting it to the integer, Converting to the integer, this part will be removed and the result is zero, as you can see here. So that's why we have to again change the data type of the function again. So we are saying that we, we can return and we will return always float number, which is float number k, and here we have the k. And run it again, two and minus three, and in that case, you will have the correct solution. Two and three, Again, you have the current solution. So I think the, uh, so the <coughs> solution is clear to everyone, but let's try to um, refactor our code. So what will be if I am putting here the a ABS absolute value to the inside of the if part also? Will we change it anything inside in the results? If I am put, putting here the absolute value, Will we change it anything in the results? So, guys, will we change it anything in the results if I am putting here the absolute value in the if block? Yes, I think. So, what will be changed? So what is the ABS? Do you know what is ABS? What is ABS? Maybe a negative uh, number will will be positive number. If it's a positive number, what will be? Positive. Okay, what we are doing now? So exponent is greater than zero, which means exponent is positive number, isn't it? And I'm putting here the extra ABS. What does it mean? Does anything change it in the results if I'm putting here the ABS? Sorry? Nothing change? No. Nothing will be changed, isn't it? Do you agree with me? Because yes. exponent, if we are inside of the if part, so we are inside of the if part, if I am changing the ABS to the exponent, the exponent will be always the positive number because we are checking it here. If I'm putting the ABS here, which means ABS and inside it also the positive number and that's it. Which means the, nothing will be changed. But here, as you can see, this part 
and this part they are the same which means uh, this if part and if, if block and else block will be just difference using the only one line this one if you remove this one they are the same as you can see so that's why i'm putting i'm getting these lines and put it out of the uh, if block and else block and i'm doing this action using the abs for any um, it depend, it uh, doesn't matter the exponentials value so it uh, it might be the positive or it might be the negative always i am calculating the this k number getting the absolute value of the exponential but i'm adding the one more if if exponent is less than zero in that case i am changing the value as we did before uh, so one divided by k if exponent is not less than zero in that case i'm returning the k as a result if you run the code, you will have the same result as before. But as you can see, we have the more or less lines of code for solving the same problem. And that's why um, for the quiz examples, for the exam uh, problems, it doesn't matter how many lines of code you are writing, but it would be great if you can refactor your code and optimize your code after the solving the problem. Okay, let's move on. Uh, so let's remove the, everything here. So the next example, uh, next example about the factorial. So about the factorial, you already know, about the factorial one multiplied by two multiplied by three, four, which is 24 over here. And the task is, you are given one number. You are given one number, and you have to create the function for the calculating of the factorial of the given number and print out it. Factorial. Factorial. And I'm passing here the number n, and I expecting the result of the factorial. So, which data type it should be? Int. So the integer factorial. We have one argument here, which is this number which we are passing here. And how can I calculate this expression using one number? So I am passing here the four, I have to calculate this number. How can I do that? If, if n is equal to 1, so return 1. If n equals to 2, return 2. If n equals to the 3, return 6. And so on. No. So, no. Uh, we can uh, use loop. We have to use, yes. We have yes. to use loop. Yes, okay. For um, what should be inside it? From what number I have to start? One. Okay, until? Until n. Until n, including or not? Not including. Not including. Okay, then? I multiply by what? So if I'm working n. with the i. N multiply by i. So i, if I'm um, multiplying by i, which is, a, which is a big problem, which is a big problem when you are uh, working inside of the for loop, never use for this like expression, never use the i value. Why? Because first of all, you are using the i as an iterator. So if it's n is a four, you want to uh, execute four times something. So if I am changing the i every time, which means I am decreasing the number of iterations. So one multiplied by one, one multiplied by two. And after that, I'm getting the number two, two multiplied by three, which is equals to the six and six. So I becomes as a six. And here we have the four. And after the three, it will be stopped. 
isn't it? After multiplying this part, as a result, i becomes as a 6, isn't it? And n in our case, it's a 4, and 6 here, which is in this section, it will be just stop it, which is incorrect. That's why never use the changing the i value, because we are changing i over here. And you cannot use the i as a result. It is incorrect. You have to create the variable, as I said before, when you have some expressions like a multiplication of something, so the list of multiplications, always, basically always, it's a good practice to create a number variable which is equals to the one and try to work with this variable as we did in the previous example here. So as you can see here, we have also the list of multiplications. And again, we are creating the k equals to the one and trying to solve the problem. And here we'll, we also have the multiplication of something. It doesn't matter what is inside. So that's why I'm creating the k equals to the one and inside it, I'm changing the value of the k. So the one multiplied by should be the i. So i, it's a list of numbers until the number four. So that's why here we have the mistake. We have to put equal sign. Why? Because we have here the four again. So if you are removing this one, it means you are working, you are finding the such, such like expression. If I'm entering the four, you are working until the three because equal sign you don't have. So, but our factorial says you have to work until the four. That's why I have to put here the equal sign, which means starting from the one until the end, all the numbers. Why all the numbers? Because we are changing one by one, I plus plus. And all the numbers will be multiplied with each other because we are putting here the one more time key. So the, in other words, it will be the like uh, k multiply k equals to the one multiplied by one, two, three, four. So this expression will be executed when you run this code because k itself is a one. So one will be multiplied by one at the first iteration, and it will be continued like a two and so on. So. Uh, this is the key point. If you don't know about this, uh, so you will have the you will have the problem during the exam time because it, this is just um, uh, already solved problems in our previous lab works because factorial it's not a new one new thing for you today. Uh, so today we are just trying to show the examples how can we create the this part so the declaration and so on and all of this inside it. So the logic of the factorial and so on we already showed it. So I think after the midterm, you will start learning the everything because uh, this is a problem if you don't know how can we solve the factorial problem until the sixth week. OK, so let's return the K um, because after finishing the solving the problem, we want to return the K as a result. And if you run this code, uh, so if you are Typing the four, it means 24, it's a result of the factorial. Okay. Our last example, our last example will be about the working with the digits. Uh, so the working with the symbols. If you remember in the second example, I think we have used the function to upper, which is built in function already exists in, in C++ to upper, which takes one argument, which is a char, and converts, is, converts it to the upper case. So we want to do the same thing, but we have to implement this function by ourselves. So which means we have to create the such like a function. So let's copy this everything here and put it over here. And instead of this two upper, which is built in function, we want to create our own function, which is this one two upper. Let's converting part. Let's remove it. So, um, so we know that the two upper should return the char. That's why the data type is char. The name of the function is two upper. And we know that the two upper will take the one argument here. And this argument is a char. That's why we have the char C as in one argument. And our task is convert this char C to the uppercase if it's a lower, if it's a lowercase letter. So if integer of the C is greater than or equal 97, 
So I think you know what is a 97. 97 is the lowercase uh, ASCII code of the lowercase letter A. And integer C is less than or equal 122. It's a lowercase letter Z ASCII code. If C located inside of this section, in that case, we want to subtract, as you know, 32. It's a difference between the uppercase and lowercase letters. And after that, we want to return the zero, return the C. So we are changing the value if and only if, if it's a lowercase letter. If it's a not lowercase letter, if it's an uppercase letter, we are not changing and we're returning the everything without any changes. So again, 13 CPP. Hello. KBTU. As you can see, we have the uppercase letters. As we, uh, in the second example, we used the existing function, and in 13th example, we implemented it by ourselves. So this part is key part that you have to be careful. Uh, so you, if you are putting the if part and put like this everything, it will work only if you are entering the only lowercase letters. If you are writing like if your string will contain the uppercase letters, in that case, you will have the such like a result, which is incorrect. That's why we are putting like, a, uh, we are putting this expression, like checking that if it's a lowercase, if and only if in that case, we are changing the code. So we want to create and show the next example, uppercase letter two, and we want to use the uppercase letter two, but in this case, uh, we want to check it using the other technique here. I think you looks like this. A and C is less than or equal that. In that case, we are doing the such like expression. So you have two options, this one and this one. So you might ask the question like, we have the C as a char. How can I get the result mathematical operation on the char? So inside of the char data type, if you are doing the mathematical operation, like a plus, minus, and so on, it will, behind the scene, it will convert the current chart to the ASCII code and do the mathematical operation and execute it. That's why I am running this code, so that I'm subtracting the 32 without any converting to the, uh, to the um, ASCII code. The same thing here. So see, it's a char. When I'm comparing the something with the char, they will be compared like using the ASCII codes. Behind the scene, in the logic, in the logic of this comparison says, A, it's a 97. So it will convert this A to the ASCII code. And C also will be converted to the ASCII code and compare the results. If C located in the range of A and Z, which means C is lowercase letter. Only in that case, we want to change and we want to subtract the 32. And uppercase letter two we are using. Let's check it again. And as you can see, we have the same result. So this is our last example. Uh, and the time to your questions. Please raise raise your hand and ask the questions. Yes, if you don't have any questions, you can leave the meeting. So the students who have the question, please raise your hand. And to say the number of the example. Yes, Askar. Askar, question. Could you repeat uh, thanks to me why we used uh, <clears throat> ABC? Uh, no, apes. Uh, so 11s, I think the 11s, because uh, so the exponent in this case, we are expecting, so the exponent might be the negative number. Okay, so if it's a negative number, what should be? It should be the same execution, same calculation, but should be the one divided by something. So that's why we are putting here the ABS. It doesn't matter if the is positive or negative. We are calculating the base number. 
which is this number. And after that, we are checking if exponential was the negative number. In that case, we are changing the result like a k equals to one divided by k, which is this expression. If exponential was a positive number, in that case, we are just returning the eight as a result without any changes. Is it clear? Oscar? Yes, and uh, second question, uh, why we use the base in exponent? Uh, couldn't we use uh, a and b and int main? Uh, and so why we can't? So again, again, about it, we already discussed. So a and b, oh. it's a local variable. Local variable which was created inside of the main. You cannot do it like a and b inside of the my power because inside of the my power these variables cannot be accessible so you can also do it like a and b here it doesn't matter it's up to you but you can you have to understand that this a and this a they are the different because this a this a variable created inside of the my power and this a created inside of the main and they are the different variables that's why it doesn't matter what you are passing here. You are passing not variable itself. You are passing just the value of this a and b. OK? So this variable a not will be passed here like with the name, with the, or everything else. It will be just passed like a value. If a equals to the 2, so here will be the 2 and 3. This is just an example how we can call our function. And this 2 will be assign it to the base and free will be assigned to the exponent and that's it so don't mix these variables we are creating inside of the main and the variables inside of the functions so inside of the functions it's up to you the name of the functions so the name of the variables might be anything even they are they can be uh, the same as we created inside of the b so they can be like this so in that case will be the here the b and here will be the a and this is also correct and it will also work. But I'm showing it like, so here we have to be. So I'm showing that, um, uh, so I'm writing like a different va variables because uh, for someone it can be somehow confused, like A and B here and A and B here, uh, but they are the, the different variables. So to showing that, I'm creating the different var variable names here. Okay, so any other questions guys? Now it's clear. Thank you. Any other, any other questions, guys? So if you don't have any questions, please open the general channel and find the lecture notes and solve the, all the problems for the lab until the lab number six, including today's lecture and prepare yourself. And inside of our channel, I have also the lecture note, lecture videos link. Uh, so the tab in that video, you have, you can find the links to the each lecture, and you have to prepare yourself to the next week midterm exam. Okay, thank you, Aki Askar. Your question uh, about uh, midterm exams. Uh, have you already discussed with us uh, teachers about midterms? When will we have them? How will it separate us? So about it uh, will be announced in the next week, in the beginning of the next week, it might be the uh, on Tuesday on, or Wednesday, um, about the format and about the timetable, when which students will pass the exam and in which format. Uh, so now we are discussing with the dean's office and with other professors about everything. Okay. So uh, your, your task is, is you have, uh, you have, yes. You, your uh, task sorry. is you have to be prepared prepared to the next week uh, by solving the, all the problems until the week number six. And this is your key point. So the lecture number six. Uh, functions group number three. So I am uploading this pro uh, program as uh, so the examples to the GitHub to connect the system. So Oscar, continue asking your question. Uh, will 
will a midterm exams appear in Vespa? So, no, uh, in timetable in Vespa. So yeah, I, I'm I'm saying about in about the Teams channel. In the general channel, I think for all of the students of the first year of students will be the separate um, separate post about the midterm. Okay. Not in VSP, or it will be inside of the our channel. That's why please check and follow the channels uh, in the Microsoft Teams. Okay. Uh, in which platform we will pass our midterms in factoring or in capital Pla building? Platform will be using this uh, LabWorks platform judging system. In those system will be created a contest and it will be separated uh, and give it to you the account credentials and you have to work uh, almost the same actions uh, you will do the, almost the same actions to pass the problems how you are doing the lab works i mean in this system so this is our local system i'll give it to you instead of the pp1 lab one will be the pp1 midterm exam group one or the other cases and login and password will will be given from us during the exam time okay about the rules also will be the separate post about the rules and what you can do what you cannot do uh, we will announce near the starting uh, the beginning of the next week Okay, guys, if you don't have any questions, it's the uh, end of today's lecture. Thank you to everyone. Please prepare to the midterm exam. Bye. Bye, Professor Babur. Thank you. Bye, teacher. Thank you for the lesson. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.